Welcome to the DZ Easy Show, where we create the decentralized betterverse using DZs. Welcome to the DZ Easy Show, Episode 5, where we're going to build Harry Seldon's vault, or his hyper vault. Okay, well, we're going to do some coding in Node, and uh, this video is what I started with, building on Hypercore Coding Live Stream with Paul Frazee from January 4th, 2021. So search for it and start it around 30 minutes. And that code, you could download it from GitHub, Erangel, DZs Alpha. And um, so the dir browse directory is the code. And there's a readme file of how to set it up on your machine. So you install uh, Jest as a test harness, hyperspace and hyperdrive. You could run tests, but I didn't I only put two tests in there that don't do anything and uh, index.js starts node running. So let's just see what it does. Okay, so node index.js. Okay, tells me to open my web browser. Okay, localhost 8080. It's HTTP. And it gives me a directory listing of a hyperdrive. And if we look at the code in code, so I put five different hyperdrives to choose from. So it's looking at this first one, which is being served from my basement. And it has these files. It has something called platonic.html. And if I click it, it shows me the platonic solids. Wow, there are five of them. And uh, then um, if I go back, um, so you can see index.html, which gives you this uh, nice virtual reality view. And now when it got, finds a directory, it drills down into the directory. So you could see how the fonts are created and the JSON file for the fonts. Okay, so it has directory browsing and the two dots goes up a directory. So all that code is explained in that video by Paul and uh, you could download and play with it here. So that is the starting point for building on hypercores into a system that we would want to read files, JSON files and parse them and take actions linking to other places from them. So just taking a quick look through this we're doing an HTTP server in Node.js. We're bringing in these two modules and we're um, calling the hyperspace client uh, client. Okay, yeah, we're, the client becomes hyperspace client here so we can instantiate it. And uh, let's see, we're passing in a drive key, which is one of these beautiful hex digits. Okay, so that comes in and we have to get the hex buffer from that key into a key variable that's passed into the hyperdrive. And we're using the core store of the client to load up that hyperdrive. So hyperspace gives you a client and we're getting the core store of that client and we're getting a reference to a drive. Okay, so if you just type that in and you type these two statements, await for the drive to be ready, and then you could get the drive.key out of it and any of their properties of the hyperdrive. Okay, now if you read a directory, the root directory, um, that will await for the ready, um, so you don't need a wait ready. So here I'm getting a directory list and I'm logging the directory list. But So Paul walks through all that. But now if you want to do some HTTP, uh, the 8080 server, um, this is how it's done. You have a request and a response. You get the URL, 
and uh, we're going to get stat some information from the path from that URL and then uh, you could look at that and see if something's a file or a directory so wherever we wind up if we're on a directory and the path does not end with a slash we're redirecting adding a slash to make that work now <clears throat> We're going to read the subdirectory files from the path. So read directory will get you all these files. And if you want to log it to console, you could do that. And then Paul walks through building a beautiful HTML page <laughs> like this with the React uh, HTML, whatever that is. So that's the dot dot code to go up a directory. You go href dot dot and that's uh, then your files are mapped to um, print a div with a, an anchor tag for each file. So your href is the file name and the file. Now, one problem I'm having is if file names have spaces in them, so they're being escaped, and uh, the anchor points to the escaped version, but it can't actually access the file. I'll show you that in a minute. But then this is what writes the 200 OK response header with text HTML. So it's writing HTML page. OK, so that's directory processing. And then if you have a file, you're writing a header of 200 and you're creating a read stream on the file and piping it to the result. So we explained that every time a chunk is read from the drive, it gets piped to the response stream. So if you have megabytes and gigabytes of stuff coming in, it'll pipe it as it's coming in. So it might actually stream a video for you. But if you read the whole file, like a waiting drive promises read file, you're going to wait until that whole thing is read into memory before it uh, renders the page. Okay. So, and listen on 8080, and then I just give you a nice little met friendly message telling you what to do. So let's change it to another uh, drive and look at that drive. So Harry Seldon's Vault. What should be in Harry Seldon's Vault? Well, first, what is that? That's from the Foundation series by um, Mr. Isaac Asimov. All right, so I'm going to run this. Don't worry about the error yet. Okay, so open my web browser. So the idea of a foundation vault is what would you store up for people to find in a thousand years if you knew that the world is just going to hell in a handbasket? Well, you might want to store up some things like Carl Sagan's Cosmos series. So maybe your favorite episode of that you'd want to store. Or you might want to store up something about education, the underground history of American education. Ooh, so they don't make the same mistakes that we did. And you might give a readme.txt, other things that have been censored from the internet that you might want to store up. And uh, maybe all the information about COVID that you could find, everything that's been taken down, like a Rogan Malone interview. So let's try streaming that. And it's streaming from my basement. OK, so you can watch all three hours. And it's no longer on YouTube. How about that? So let's build our own Harry Seldon vaults. OK, so let's see what happens when you have spaces in the file name. So I just added a console log statement. And uh, let's go back to the terminal. OK, so let's run index node index.js, open our web browser. OK, so let's go to John Taylor Gatto and try opening this file. So look at the bottom. It says it has spaces in the file name there. So I'm going to click it, and I want to look at the console. OK, so we got an error. And what was it written here? OK, file not found. It couldn't find my favorite icon for some reason, because uh, I didn't put one in there. Uh, is that the only problem? No, it can't be. Uh, all right. 
let's put a favorite icon in there and try again. Okay, yeah, I just killed the server. Oh, what did I do? I put the favorite icon. You know, that won't happen again, I don't think. Let's run it again. Okay, open web browser. Ah, it only escaped one of them. Hmm. Okay, we go into this directory. And have we gotten an error yet? Nope. Click this. And we got our promise, but the promise should be different. File not found. No such file or directory with this percent twenties. Okay. And in the hyperdrive it has actual spaces, but they're not translating. Because here it's trying to download, it's doing a get.js and uh, it's in the hypertree library iterator, hypertree live get.js line 70. All right, and 113. Okay, well, let's kill the server. And we've just taken it offline, how nice. Let's look in code at node modules hyperdrive, wherever that is, hypercore, hyperdrive, and we could follow the path right from that error message. All right. Uh, oh, it's hypertry. Okay, we need the hypertry. And where else? Live get.js. Get.js. Okay, and what line? 70 and 113. Okay, head.final, no. So call back, not seek bucket val. And uh, 113.10. Okay, self.update i plus one node on node. Uh, it's something with the tree node trying to update itself. Okay, it's beautiful code. Update head collides. Oh no, check collisions. Beautiful code. I have no idea how it works, but it's beautiful. Now we could go back to my ugly code. All right. No, it's Paul's ugly code, but I, I just added comments. Yeah. Uh, all right, so that's just a bug for now. Um, let's explore these other hyperdrives. Okay. It's like a treasure hunt. What else is in this Harry Seldon vault visit? Oh boy, everything you need to know about health that you can no longer find on the internet. And this is a good one, regenerative food and farming, but uh, it has spaces so you can't watch it. But uh, you could look at a patent application, PDF. Okay, uh, what else? That's not the patent for COVID. All right, let's see what else we got here. Uh, control C. All right, let's find another hyperdrive. Okay, open your web browser. Mm -hmm. And what do we got? Ooh, History of the ENIAC by Bill Muckley. Oh, here's uh, Paul's video, if it goes off of YouTube. And, oh, you could read Uncle Tom's Cabin. Let's see, is that, uh, yeah, you could download that. How about that? You save it and you read it later. And now it's downloading. Unknown time left, but look at that. It's only a few hundred meg, and you'll have it to read while you're sitting in your pile of rubble. 
in your bunker. Here's the video. Okay. Yeah, all this A tech, you're going to have hundreds of hours of stuff to watch when you're starving in your bunker. So here's some Atari 2600 graphics programming for you to do. And maybe these DVD videos have some important stuff about how to rebuild the world. Oh, five things about Canada. Huh, Carrington? <laughs> I'm not going to listen to that now. Okay. All right, five things about Carrington crashed the program. <laughs> All right, let's restart that. Blame Canada. Blame Canada. Oh, sorry, Mo. <laughs> there are some good things in Canada. All right. Uh, what do we got here? Local host, 8080. Okay, this was the uh, demo that I used uh, for uh, cat pictures, um, yeah, if you want to listen to Chicken Missile. So MKVs, you would just download them and watch them with an MKV player. Or if you want to look at Carrington, there you go. Look at his Monster Feet website. It's trying to load. That's interesting. So he got the HTML, but rendering the rest doesn't look like it's loading so easily. There's some other bugs, I bet. Uh, promises, promises, promises. I promise nothing. <laughs> well, there you go. He can't. Oh, he can't get to the Internet Archive. That's for. <laughs> so I was trying to get to the Internet Archive, but I bet you could click one of these if you had it. Yeah, you'd have to have it locally. <laughs> okay, so this is an archived version of the web page. But oh, it, if you are on the Internet, it will go to the MP3 file, and you can play. Okay, so I'd like to show a few enhancements I made to this code um, since the previous video was recorded. So let's run Node.js um, for that index.js and open a web browser. Localhost 8080. Hello world. Where did my world go? Path slash decoded slash. Okay. New tab. Hello tab. Okay, so now we're browsing the local host. All right. So, see, this README file has some hyperdrives. This could also be an HTML file which can redirect you to each hyperdrive. And that would be, like, if we call this the vault, then there'd be a vault.html, or even an index.html that you could run. And, uh, you know, so, like, when you open an index, an, an HTML file, like uh, here, let's try this one. Okay, so um, it'll browse to that HTML file. And this is, happens to us to be a saved website, uh, saved with the save as, so you could learn about AI and the OECD. Uh, yeah. Okay, so um, if there is like a special character in the file, I'm still getting a not found even when I escape it. So, uh, it's crashing. Why is it crashing me? No such file. Yeah, the throw handle error. So now let's try that again. Is it um, a... Okay, let's re reload. Okay, and try... Let's try this one. Okay, so here's the 404 message. If you click a file that uh, has some special characters that it can't display. Um, it can't interpret. So the problem here is that um, it's HTML encoding those special characters, and it's an emoji symbol in here. And uh, the decode still has this. So it could be my URL encoding, something weird with that. But uh, I fixed the problem with spaces. So like you click. Um, something like this and it serves the document now because um, the path has the percent 20s and I decode the path and then I 
changed uh, to that directory, uh, re redirect to that, okay? And uh, you can uh, watch these MP4 files. Um, all right, listen to, yeah, you could, uh, just like we saw earlier, okay? New England Journal of Medicine. You can learn about the Nuremberg Code. Read it. Okay. So uh, the spaces are working, but uh, things like this. Okay, so it's a video it's trying to download. And uh, yeah, I still have a problem with some bad character. But it decoded the MP4, but it got the file not found, but it didn't. It's trying to. Yeah. But I could hear like right click, save link as. And uh, yeah, it decoded it. It's uh, downloading the link, and then you could save it as a download and listen to it locally. Secretary Blinken, important to learn what he's doing. Okay, so now it's going to stream the MP4. And you can check. Yes, we are. Um, so here it correctly decoded the URL and put the spaces in. And now it's going to stream the MP4 as soon as it comes uh, down the pike. Okay, so I'm downloading. Let's see. Okay, so that's cool. So I'm downloading the MP3 file while I try to stream the MP4 file from the um, hyperdrive in the basement. Okay. So I'm taxing out that server a bit. Unknown time left. Mm -hmm. Should be done with that MP3 soon. And then, okay, and now I could focus on that MP4. So it depends on whether that MP4 supports streaming, I guess. Okay, so here's an example of a PDF file that's um, not easy to find. Uh, wow. Sorry. All induced antibody and protection against infection. However, the challenges of mice given any vaccines led to occurrence of immunopathology suggesting hypersensitivity was induced. Caution in proceeding to application in humans is indicated. Okay. Okay, so let's look at some changes that were made here. Um, okay, so we needed to add a client.replicate statement because if the drive's not in the local cache, we need to replicate the metadata core of the hyperdrive. So that's like the directory listing um, a hyperdrive has two hypercores. One of them is called metadata, the other is called content. And um, so we can get all the, the files in the hyperdrive without downloading the whole hyperdrive. And then all the code that was in this create server was moved to an async function serve drive. So these URLs can be put on a web page to redirect to each one. And uh, the serve drive, I'm decoding the URI for the path and using the unencoded path when I call stat. And uh, here I'm detecting if um, the stat got a file not found, uh, but it's any error causing a file not found, um, redirect. And uh, if it's a directory, um, this is the same code to redirect to the slash but I'm using the unencoded path to read the directory. I just changed all path to unencoded path. And um, if it's a file, the same thing, read the unencoded path. So the next step would be to take these hyperdrive uh, keys and put them in a hyper B. So that's a key value store database. And then from your hyper B, you could have a web page that uh, a user can pick one of them in the hyper B, and then you add more to the hyper B, and you have more stuff in your vault. Hallelujah. So another possible next step to take if you wanted to build a vault is um, to have a file like this 
Now, um, I think it would actually need some JavaScript in order to redirect to these URLs, uh, because um, unless you're using a browser like Beaker, where you could put hyper colon slash slash and a string like that, that would re that would work. But um, on a regular browser, you would need code to um, check, um, like say this was in a JSON file that had the name of the vault and then the key, then what it could do is read that JSON file and then create a web page dynamically that has a hyperlink where you'd click on Mercola and it would redirect you to this hyperdrive. And then you could have uh, the person using this page choose which vault they want, Harry Seldon's, Mercola's, Hypertube, or Kansas Fest. So those are some ideas I'll explore in the future. But think about um, if this was in ZZ structure, how you would be able to navigate um, a path through like all this material and uh, redirect users. Uh, so say you wanted to make a case, you would show them some studies, some videos, and your reasoning behind it for sense making. Until next time. Yeah.